So it's been a couple of weeks since my last webinar about COVID. This one is done with AmCham, the American Chamber of Commerce in Cambodia. And here we're going to talk about slightly different things. So vaccination, the progress that they've done to date, which is pretty remarkable, as well as what could be there in future. What happened with the lockdown? What statistics drew them to decide to lock down when they did? And also what's going on in Cambodia versus other regional outbreaks that we've seen in Thailand and Laos. So let's get started. But before we do, my name is David Benayim and I have lots and lots of videos on my channel, mostly about tech tutorials. I have recently started doing more about COVID in Cambodia together with posts that I make and dashboards that I make on my Twitter. So you can follow that on at Dave Benayim on Twitter as well. But subscribe to my channel if you just like the tech tips that I touch on in this example. And I have so, so many more. I release one tech tip video per week on my channel. So let's get started on COVID in Cambodia. So I will talk about a lot of complex data, but uh, there's a lot. So please pay, please hang tight. Um, I'm going to go through a lot of stuff in a very short period of time. Uh, but as well as COVID stats, I always like to cover practical skills about tech. So <clears throat> here is a little thing in PowerPoint that people might not know. If you're sick of using boring bullet points, click on the home tab, go to design ideas with your regular bullet points and it can give you these nice images or probably my favorite one is where it actually gives you these icons. You don't like that icon, click here and change it for another health one. Really, really useful and then you can get other design ideas like that. It uses artificial intelligence. Uh, in fact, icons and stock images are now built into PowerPoint. You have thousands of icons that you can recolor. You have thousands of stock images. I use these all the time. I think they're invaluable. They're way better than anything you can find on Google and they're fully licensed. You also have videos, stock videos. I use these a fair amount as well. So really good uh, tips there. Let's go back here. So let's talk about the vaccines given and then we're going to look at vaccine supply. We're going to look at Cambodia versus other countries um, and then talk a little bit more about why did they lock down when they did, where to get the news and will it grow more in the future or what we can see from that. So vaccines given, this is, uh, there's two stages that are going to happen to this outbreak and to any outbreak around the world, which is mitigate and then vaccinate. So mitigate, uh, keep it as low as we possibly can so we don't have any unfortunate we reduce the number of deaths the number of hospitalizations and then vaccinate as fast as we can because in theory hopefully once we vaccinate enough people then covid will be done it will end uh, this is of course um, privy to new variants that might come about and uh, other things that might happen in future, but this is the working theory that we're going towards. So I'm going to start with vaccination, and this is somewhere where Cambodia is doing fantastically well. Over 5% of the population is now fully vaccinated. And although that might seem like a low number, that puts Cambodia third in Asia. It just hit third um, overnight. It was It was fourth, now it's third in Asia. I'm excluding Middle East because you've got places like Israel, uh, United Arab Emirates and Bahrain that are, that are smaller countries vaccinating very, very, very fast. But in the rest of Asia, Cambodia is number three in terms of fully vaccinated people. And it is going very fast as well as vaccinating about 50,000 a day for the last two weeks. Uh, what's even more impressive is the fact that the places where we've seen the outbreaks mostly Phnom Penh, Kandal, Sia, Nukville. Um, 40 percent of people have received one one dose, which is also a fantastic achievement because this is where it's it's growing the most. And as I'll talk about later on, this is where we've we've got to uh, pay attention to the most. Looking at vaccine supply, Cambodia just yesterday received another 400,000 doses of Sinopharm. Uh, Four million vaccines currently in the country. And they plan to expand that to 11 and a half million by the end of August. So the end of August, we should see 11 and a half million here. Uh, this, this kind of chart, I love it. It's a waterfall chart. It's something that's built into the newer versions of Excel and PowerPoint. 
And what it does is it shows you the step increases. It can also show you down amounts until the total number like that. So it's really good for showing step by step what happened from one point in time to another point in time. So yeah, so we've got 4 million now and we're aiming for 15 million by the end of August. Uh, and here's another interesting fact that I just learned yesterday from some research. Cambodia is in the top 10, not just in Asia, but globally when it comes to the proportion of people who are fully vaccinated divided by the proportion of people who have taken their first dose. The, the current value is 63%. So 63% of people have had their second dose of the people who have had their first dose, which, is, which puts it in the top 10 globally. They are really pushing the second dose. Um, and that is important for the Sinovac and Sinopharm vaccines, as I'll explain in a little bit. So yeah, four, 4 million vaccines in country. How is that split by vaccine type? Um, Sinopharm and Sinovac make up the vast majority of it. AstraZeneca is only 8%, and that's come through the COVAX scheme. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, I think, are hoping to choose the AstraZeneca vaccine over others. Unfortunately, the, the supply of that is so, so low, and most of those have already been taken. Cambodia is keeping half of it for the second doses, I believe, of the people who have taken the first dose, which means there are very, very few of them left. The Sinopharm and Sinovac vaccines are the ones that are going to make up the majority. And because of what we're seeing in India, it's it's looking like it's going to be difficult to procure more of these, uh, a lot more of these in the uh, in the in the near future. The WHO though is expected to actually give authorization to both Sinovac and Sinopharm in the next 10 days. Sinopharm it should be by the end of this week and Sinovac, it should be next week. This is what they've announced, what I, I, what I saw on Reuters and other news sites. So that would be a huge push for uh, the credibility of these vaccines, um, hoping that it will happen when it does. But as I said before, the first dose of Sinovac and Sinopharm, don't think you're protected from it. It has very low protection. In Chile, a study found that it was only 3% effective after the first dose. It goes up to 67% according to the study in Chile with uh, 10 million people after the second dose. But you need to wait a couple of weeks after your second dose to reach peak effectiveness. So. Uh, this is a very common misconception that you have the vaccine and then you're fine. No, wait, because it takes a couple of weeks for it to take effectiveness in, in your body. All right, going next into uh, Cambodia versus other countries. So Cambodia, albeit going through its worth time, it's still the 16th lowest globally in terms of cases per million. I will note that this has fallen from being the fourth lowest globally before the incident but it is still very, very low in comparison to others. And I get that data from the Worldometer website where I exclude certain things. Something that's not a country, anything with less than 100 cases, a small population, and anything that's not accurately reporting testing. My other, YouTube, my other uh, webinar talks a lot more about this, but I will talk about more new stuff now. So Cambodia's cases per 1 million is still pretty low compared to, for example, US. It's 140 times higher than what it is in Cambodia. But is it accelerating? Cambodia is playing catch up, so is Cambodia accelerating at the same rate? So if we look at Cambodia's, um, Cambodia's current outbreak versus other ones in the days after uh, it started, so this is the current outbreak, well, after it hit 100 cases. So this is how they regulate it. So this is the days after it hit 100 cases from other countries with similar sizes. Um, these ones are in Europe, whereas these ones are like Vietnam and some very low ones. Cambodia is not doing particularly badly. It, did, it has taken an increase here. I'll talk more about the step change that happened there. So 30 days after 100 cases, Cambodia was on 1.7 thousand. Look at the difference between these European countries. It's just night and day different. So why lockdown when they did? And this is something that I've started looking at recently more. So the seven-day moving average of cases, we have nationwide in Phnom Penh. 
Um, from November 20th until sort of earlier this month, you can see that it's essentially mostly a straight line. Uh, the number of cases were between 30 and 100 nationwide, didn't really change very much. And Phnom Penh was around the 30 mark almost every day, very, very consistently. Then around here, there was a big step change. They had the first day with 500 cases and then kept going up. Uh, and then there was another another period where it, it continued going up. And we'll see how this relates to lockdowns. More recently, fortunately, it started stagnating and being more of a straight line again. As we can see, they were very, very, very little changing before. This was a perfect straight line. Nationwide, a little bit higher because of non Phnom Penh outbreaks I'll talk about later. And then a step change happened here. But you might be able to argue that these are still straight line increases. Um, over the last two weeks, we have seen region in the region of 400, 500, 600 cases most of the days, but we're not going 600, then 1,000, then 3,000, then 10,000, which is what we do see in other places. Uh, in terms of when it happened, um, they have been fairly quick to act. So they put in the curfew roughly around the time when this was happening, and they put in the lockdown roughly the time when, the, when this was happening as well. Not exactly, but more or less that's when it happened. But I will say that the positivity rate is increasing. So even though we're recording similar number of cases, uh, the, the number of cases per test is increasing. Uh, I haven't got a chart right here to show that, but it is something that is increasing and that I am monitoring. So that is worrying because it means that there probably are more undetected cases in this time frame. Uh, where to get the news? I did already show you this, so I'm going to jump forward to the last one. Uh, you may you may be aware, you may not, but Thailand and Laos are experiencing the worst outbreaks to date at the moment as well. Um, and this is how it is in the days since the outbreak begun. So people talk about exponential growth and something that's really, really worrying. That's what Thailand is doing. As you can see, the first day had like, uh, you know, about 50 cases. The second day was 100, the th then 150, 200. By day seven, they were already increasing by a lot more like this. So this is really what we've been seeing. Um, Lao as well is going through by far its worst, and that is a little bit higher than Cambodia was, uh, kind of a little bit on par, but a little bit higher. They are very, very early in their outbreak. They locked down immediately straight away, um, whereas Cambodia did take a little bit longer to get there. So where are the outbreaks happening? Uh, Phnom Penh, as we know, has the most. Then we have Sihanoukville, Khao Tom, Bavet, and Poipet. Interestingly, these are four casino towns because casinos and large apartment buildings, large hotels do have the ability where the virus spreads more. So that's where it's happened. But what's, what, what is really promising, I think, is that we just haven't seen the same outbreaks happen in any other place. So even though I have pointed these out, this is not the entire province of Sphai Rieng or the, the entire province of uh, Bante Manche. This is just a tiny part of it. The rest of the country was seeing very sporadic cases. Every, every three or four days, they might have two or three cases, but we're not seeing it explode. A little bit technical, but there is a concept of um, R0. Uh, and R0 of COVID-19, the original variant is somewhere between one and a half and three and a half. What that means is that if I were to have COVID, I would be expected to infect between one and a half and three and a half people. A lot of people assume it's a lot higher. Um, this is what Michael was saying as well, that you know you might be expected to infect one or two members of your family uh, with the original variant, but now it's a little bit different. The, the B117 UK variant has changed that. But COVID is over here. I really love this chart. This is the percent of people who die versus the R0. As we can see, for example, chickenpox has a really high R0. Uh, you do infect so many other people with chickenpox even without trying. Uh, COVID is over here, so it's a lot lower. Measles is very, very scary because measles has a, a really high R0 and also a decent death rate. Chickenpox death rate is 
negligible, but measles is is quite worrying. And smallpox is up here because so many people die and so many people catch it. COVID, fortunately, COVID-19 is over here. So it's not it's not as high as other viruses we've seen in both regards. But that doesn't mean it's not worrisome. It's just the amount that it's taken in the world that is the most worrisome. So Cambodia is experienced, has a very low urbanization rate. And this is what I think is one of the reasons behind the fact that we're not seeing it expand so far in outside provinces. Uh, it's only 24%, which is still significantly lower than even Thailand and even Laos. In fact, Thailand is more than double this. It's, it's around 50% mark. So this is something that I've built. This is using Power BI. Um, you can see all the countries in the world. And I can see here that I want to see cases per million on a map. And I can see the lowest to highest or the highest to lowest. This is the highest 50 countries. If I go here, I can choose the highest, say, 80 countries, roughly half the world because I'm excluding a lot of them. And what you notice is that this is, well, everyone in Europe, but Africa is blank apart from the southern and the northernmost parts of Africa. Asia is also virtually non-existent here, as is Australia. Americas are very, very high. Uh, this is, yeah, using Power BI also allows some other great functionality, like you can hover over and see the trend, something that I built together with my colleague Joe. But here's what's fascinating. I go lowest to highest for the 80 countries. As you can see, not a single European country is here. And I see here that all of the Asian and African countries in the middle of Africa seem to be here, and a lot of the ones in, the, in Central America. What do all of these places have in common? They're in the middle of the world. More specifically, they're in tropical regions. Now, people talk about weather being an influence. Uh, we're not sure, definitely, but it seems like something about being in the middle of the world makes a difference. It could be that it is direct weather, it could be temperature, humidity, but it also could, is a byproduct of those. When it is hot, you're outside more. You get more vitamin D. Transmission rates outside are much, much lower than inside. So yeah, um, that's it. By the way, if you want to play around with this yourself, uh, you can go on my website, Excel Consulting. Uh, I have the COVID-19 dashboard, exactly what I showed you. You can play around with this in the same way. Uh, this one here. So you can navigate. I've got lots of other visuals over here as well. But the one that I showed you is this one. So if you like that video, then I have other videos on COVID in Cambodia on my channel. Check them out. But most of my channel is about tech tutorials, whether it's Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams that you're into. I've got loads of tech tutorials about tech the use of the workplace. So consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more of that content. Thanks for watching.